There's my mic. Boy, I'm firing on all cylinders this morning. Um, the big plans, except uh, I spilled water all over my desk, and then I had to clean that up. And then, um, I don't know, we'll go from there. Hey, let's, uh, as usual, you know, feel free to... I don't even know. I tried to go on the restream and see if the, the title was correct, and they changed that up on me, so I don't know if the title is correct. So, um, I don't know. We'll just go from here. Um, one thing I could do, because uh, I found some old stuff. I was looking for, if we go way back to my Airstation page, I was looking for this, um, these old Star Wars models that I did. What else did I do? Star Wars Galaxies cards that we, I made a long time ago. Um, and then I did find all of these things. You know, so this is the one of the very first models that I ever made in ZBrush was this uh, Spider Shaman. So maybe I can give myself a, a critique. But, um, and we have, well, I won't bring that up. So let me see what this is. Subtool all high. I'm going to cross my fingers. There's something else I am a little bit worried about, but um, I don't know. We'll see. And uh, I don't know. I guess it holds up. He's got a spider body. He's got spidery legs. I could probably 3D print this out. And it wouldn't be too atrocious here. Good morning, uh, or good evening, uh, Karthik, in your case. Yeah, all right, all right. I also found some other old stuff. So that was my old Eat 3D stuff. Uh, Grandpire, the good, the bad, and the ugly guy. This old, you know, let's, try, let's see what this guy's up to. 35, date modified, oof. We don't need the dock. Um, and I also found some old DCUO stuff that I could go through and kind of clean up a little bit since that was my first ZBrush job in the industry. Um, we can go and check those out and see if I want to update any of those. Uh, what else? There is something new in ZBrush 2022.0.4, the gizmo size underneath the preferences. And I still need to go through and do the updated. Oh, he's metallic. There we go. Very, very early stuff. Look at that chunky, chunky armor, dude. Hey, John Yu. Um, yeah, he, he does have uh, most of the most of the creature stuff. And again, this is super early. I should I could probably go through. Although I don't know, I'm not seeing a ton of stuff that's jumping out at me that bothers me too too much. I suppose. Um, but yeah, he he could. Uh, he's very. He's got a very light feel to him. We could go in here and say, you know, it's geometry. I'm going to go into solo mode. I'm going to drop him down. Maybe subdivision level three. Uh, I, I do like the damn standard O2 brush uh, for a little bit of this stuff. We could go through and kind of, I know I probably would need to get some decent reference here. And this should be bone, I think. This, uh, well, I mean, he's he's got spider. <laughs> it's supposedly, I could, you know, I was, I was thinking about making his head split open. Uh, kind of like those old, um, oh, what's that? Blade, the old Blade uh, movie. I forget which one it was. The one where they, the one where they kill vampires. Um, yeah, so this would be a good jowl area right here. And then uh, over, what was that, sub-mandibular. And then this one here, and then these stringy ones. And then, again, if this is going to be, use a little bit of clay build up right underneath here. Have that hang down just a little bit here. And uh, so I'm just going to go back in and just kind of maybe play around with this stuff a little bit. Deepen these, these wrinkles. But this would be a good candidate for just going in and finding the, you know, those old references of uh, old kind of dry climate. <laughs> Sun damaged skin is so interesting to look at. Um, yeah, especially around that neck because he's it's kind of weird. He's got this super old face, and then he's got kind of a kind of a he's, he's pretty pretty in shape. Not a whole lot of hanging skin down here. Just up here, so uh, maybe he wore. Uh, he always wore like a neoprene suit. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, we could maybe split his. Ooh, we could maybe split his head open. This would might be a little bit difficult. This would fall under. So what you could do is we could give this a shot. So let's go ahead and well, 
let's get rid of this guy real quick so he doesn't take up space. Delete all. And we can go, you know what, let's take his head. And I'm going to say free subdivision levels. And, and uh, oh man, I'm even working. So I never do this anymore. Open meshes? Ugh. No, thank you. I'm going to go in here to close convex hole. So this is with Z model brush, BZM. Oh man, I got water underneath my keyboard. Well, it's not touching anything metal. <laughs> so stupid this morning. Uh, okay, we'll go ahead and close that hole on the bottom there. And then in the inside of the eye. So whenever you freeze your subdivision levels, it drops down to subdivision level one and then um, allows you to kind of go in here and make changes. Then it'll mask out any changes you did and then reproject your high. Uh, I'm not certain how well it's gonna work in this case, but let's give it a shot. So I'm gonna go in here to this eyeball here. We're gonna go ahead and cap this. Control Shift, Control W to make it all one poly group. Make sure that these are, okay, good. Um, sorry, I'm having a hard time. Give me a second, preferences. Uh, sorry, it's under transform. Uh, locals on, okay, let's tap here, there we go. Uh, okay, so I can bring this in. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a quick Z Modeler brush inset polygroup island legacy. And we'll just kind of pull this in a little bit and then we're gonna go in here to Q mesh, uh, polygroup island, hold down, Q, push back and then hold down shift. Just kind of push that back a little bit so I give myself a little bit of breathing room. Boy, that is some, that is some ratty geometry in here. I'm not sure why I decided to stick with that. And then uh, as far as the mouth bag goes, I'm gonna go ahead and make it so that his jaw can split open and maybe about halfway up his upper face too. What's the best way for me to do this? So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna use visibility because I need it to kind of stop here and we'll maybe do an inset. I'm gonna grab all this geo here. I guess we could do top and bottom first. There, it doesn't really, so it doesn't really matter. And then this here, and I may even just z mesh this. This is a mess. Okay, so come on, Pav from 20 years ago. I'm still going here. I'm going to say bevel um, edge loop complete. We'll just put a little line right through here, and that'll kind of stop here and hopefully stop down. Yeah, it stops down there. So this is the open hole, which I don't really care too much about. And then I need it to stop there. Good, perfect. And then I'm gonna go through and let's go ahead and control shift, bring everything else back. Uh, these I don't need anymore. So it's the easiest way to get rid of these. Take this one here. Man, and I had this, what, what the hell was I doing? Uh, we'll say delete hidden and then in here Grab these two, invert, and we'll say delete hidden. And then we just got one more thing to clean up, uh, this little area right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just over this edge, we'll go do a split edge, and I'm gonna say delete edge. And then I'm gonna say, yeah, let's do this. Brush ZM slice, so this is just the slight, uh, topo, um, brush we're using. Um, you know what, let's do it. Let's just do another split so I can do it across. There we go. And then delete edge and then mark this one and we're just gonna go ahead and delete that polygon. Okay, so we've split his face. We don't really have a mouth bag for this one. Can I make one? Yeah, I did not give myself an easy thing to do this morning. Um, it's too early for this. Well, let's give it a shot. So what I'm going to do temporarily, well, let's quick save. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude. Is that the best way to go about that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Let's go in here. I don't want to bridge anything. Okay. Um, I'm going to flip my normals so I can kind of see what's going on in here. And I'm going to extrude edge loop complete. Um, let's see how this works. So I want to just bring it in and then I want to cap it. And I'm going to, as I bring it in, I'm going to tap Alt and then hold down Alt to see if I can grab everything. And I don't want it to snap. 
Okay, you know what I'm gonna, you know what I might need to do. Let's go ahead and flip this back around. I'm going to. Oh, it's gonna be so ugly. I don't want to close holes. Hmm. <laughs> I can duplicate this off, extrude in, and then weld. Oh man, what a mess! What did I do? What did I do this morning? got to be an easier way. Who does a mouth like this? What a dumb idea. Whose idea was this? Um, hmm. All right, because what I could do is I could close the holes, but I'm also going to do some weird stuff. Okay. Uh, close holes, mirror and weld, control shift tap, and I'm going to isolate it so I can hit W and then control drag in. And then I'm going to do a, I don't want to do a polish by feature. Oh, maybe I do. Let's try polish by features. Kind of soften that a little bit. And I'm just going to do a quick inflate. And then do another polish. And then inflate. And then another polish. Oops, not polish, polish by features just to kind of soften that transition here. And then, I mean, I guess while I'm in here, I can go through and just kind of hold down shift. Let's drop that Z intensity down. I just need a cavity in his head that'll catch light, damn it, for his weirdo mouth. Hmm. And I'm going to take this back. <laughs> uh, let's drop our Z intensity down even further. And all right, whatever. Just get back there, man. And this is why when I originally made this, I didn't really do anything um, crazy with this guy because he wasn't really set up to do anything crazy with. He was set up there to sit in an A pose, basically, which I guess is fine for. 2006 or whenever I made this. All right, let's go ahead and flip. And I suppose the good news is worst case scenario. Um, we may be able to get around this. Uh, okay, so let's hit W. Let's hold down to control and drag so I can just kind of get this area here and see if I can't even like open this up a little bit. Flip, let's go uh, move brush with auto masking topological turned on. Let's turn that range down to like 1.5 and let's see if I can't just nudge all sorts of stretch polygons. If I get this worked out, I'm going to Z remesh the hell out of this thing. Okay. And then W, control drag. I just want, basically, you know what, we could do this. Let's do upper and lower, maybe. Here. And then I'm going to hold down control, go into mass lasso. And we're just going to grab all this. And you know what, I might have set these up. No, I didn't. Of course I didn't. Let's do control shift, control shift S to shrink, control shift drag. Let's set up these polygroups here. So we're going to say control W. And then on this one, let's go ahead and do a quick, uh, we can't do insert because there's triangles, but maybe don't, don't crash on my ZBrush. That'd be completely my fault, but just asking. <laughs> Control W. All right, so there's more geometry in there now at least. All 
Well, we still have frozen subdivision, so hopefully uh, it's keeping track of what I've managed to destroy. Well, that really just does not want to open. Yeah, when I when I closed holes, it crossed over. Damn. Well, we can leave that alone, I suppose, for now. We give it the old college try. That that'd have to be something I really. Um, really thought about and pondered and did a lot of work. So, okay, so once we're done making those changes, in fact, we can even make more changes in here. While I'm in here, let's go ahead and say, you know, let's mark this as a polygroup here. And then I'm gonna go in here to the comma key. Let's go in here to brush and insert IMM, dragon bones. Let's find something with a hole in the back like this horn. We can take this here. And as long as we have a subtool with a hole in the back, and a subtool or in a subtool with a polygroup that we drag it on. We can control drag, control drag again. And let's go ahead and do a underneath geometry is turn off smooth subdivision. And we'll control drag that out. And I'm just going to say shift to smooth, or let's go in here to scale edge loop complete. I'm just going to kind of fatten that up a little bit. So now that I've made a bunch of geometry changes, uh, we can unfreeze our subdivision levels, cross our fingers. Um, worst case scenario, we can also store our original points in history and then reproject those back. But in this case, it did an okay job. If we turn off polyframe, you see it masked um, all the areas that we didn't change and then unmasked all the areas that we did change. Um, so there might be some cleanup involved, like, oops, control shift and go grab this little middle area here. I'm just gonna do a quick uh, polish by features open circle so deformation polish by features oh boy those really want to stick don't they so under the smooth brush let's go down here to min connected to one and see if we can't grab these little spikes oh they're a mass that's why now let's try yeah projected them and then it wanted to project them to some geometry I really didn't care for. Not a huge deal. Uh, same thing for this. We can go through and kind of deep dive in here and then just push that back. Uh, that min connected of one is useful for open-ended meshes and like cloth and stuff. I think in fact if you look up like cloth smooth in your brushes that's that's the setting that it'll have open there. There we go. Let's drop our resolution down. Clean that up. Clean that up. Clean that up. All right, so now we have horns built in. Uh, so really that was just an exercise in free subdivision levels. Thank you for attending my ZBrush free subdivision levels talk. All right, let me get caught up here. Um, yeah, the very first, uh, let me see, let me just grab this guy again. Let's mess around with this guy. Yeah, eat 3D. Uh, the the vampire, vampire. Let me see. Always switch. Let's go ahead and turn this off. Let's go ahead and get rid of the spider shaman. I'm done with him. Delete him. Don't want to see him anymore. Drag on the canvas. Go in edit mode. He don't have, he doesn't have any pants. Hold on. There they are. And let's do all high. All right. So. Oh, he's 51 million polygons. Okay, he's, he's pretty healthy. Uh, let's say we wanted to pose him with all of this stuff on. Uh, that would be a pretty tall order. And I'm not even sure. You know what? He might have subdivisions in all the right places. So let's give it a shot. Let's go in here to Z plugin. I'm doing a lot of weird stuff. So I apologize to poor ZBrush who's having to wrangle this stuff for me. So let's go over here to Transpose Master. We're going to T-Pose Mesh. I'm not going to do it with the T-Pose with Z-Sphere Rig because there's just too much stuff going on. And really, only his body would really benefit from a Z-Sphere rig, I think. So let's go ahead and say T-Pose Mesh. I was going to drop everything down to the lowest, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, at a switch for Gizmo. Oh, yeah, Gizmo button size preferences, Gizmo 3D. Uh, so if you notice in 0 .03, 0 0.3. The gizmo might have been a little bit large, so here under preferences, uh, 3D, gizmo 3D. There's the large icons here, so W, 
here's my normal small icons. If we go in here and turn on large icons, ah, oh, it'll crash. But um, <laughs> no, you don't need to save. It's okay. And we'll go ahead and load it back up. But uh, yeah, that'll toggle on and off your large and your small. Well, let's see if we can't get a something or other going. And this guy is. He's a pretty large, you know what I might, I might do, I might pare him down just a little bit here. Sub tool here, turn everything on. Um, does he need, this head I think we can move separately. We don't really need to, like all of this I can just move. Oh, the knife. Yeah. Oh man, this is all built in. I mean, I guess it's okay for 3D printing. It's all one solid mesh, but boy, what a pain. I gave myself a lot to have to do there. Uh, actually, damn, that was all one piece. Give me a break, Mike. Who made this dumb model? Uh, let's see, knife here. Tell me this is not one all solid piece. Okay, good. It wasn't totally weird. I'm going to take all of this here, just grab little pieces of it. Control Shift A, ah, Control Shift Alt, Control Shift Drag, Control Shift A, Control Shift Drag. There we go. So I'm going to do a delete lower. I'm going to split hidden and I'm going to reconstruct this back down. And then we're going to go back up. What a weird way to work. And then we're going to turn this off. Basically anything I can move completely independently from his body that I don't want to have to wrangle, I'm going to just turn off and just do it later with move multiple. We had a lot of stuff going on. Okay. Uh, you know what? Yeah, thigh pad U2. I can do you separately. Of course. Split hidden. Reconstruct. Down one. Reconstruct. I think this is back when I was just afraid to have too many sub tools because I couldn't navigate very well. Um, <laughs> now all of this stuff would be separate. Because this might actually be problematic to pose, but we'll give it a shot. Okay, so if we go all high, uh, here's everything kind of working for him. Let's go ahead and get rid of this dude. You know what, you two. You two. Oh my gosh. Delete lower, split hidden, reconstruct. Takes longer the further you go back. I'm not going to go back any further than that. And then back here, one, two. I mean, the good news is I do have subdivision levels for all of this stuff. And it's all watertight, so if I was going to go through and 3D print this guy, it might work okay. But now let's go ahead and hide this. And before I do anything, let's go ahead and do a quick save. Um, cool. Yeah, this is, this is a while ago. Uh, I haven't felt in the zone since, like, um, I don't know, 2010. <laughs> That's the last time I was in the zone. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, it might it might be easier. Uh, I I just need a little bit more control. Um, I do have my UI file. Oh, you know what? I haven't updated it for twenty twenty two. So, I mean, here 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 you can just check it out. So, just recreate this. There's modified topology, and then this is poly model. And then if we did have a Z-Sphere, which now I'm afraid to switch to, let's go out of edit mode and say switch, control N, 
Let's go back here to Z-Sphere, Edit Mode, and then here's the Z-Sphere menu right here, and that's about it. Um, of course, some of this stuff probably isn't going to be all that worthwhile to you. So let's see if he's even pointed the right way. Oh my god, he's upside down. <sighs> all right, let's fix that real quick. So turn everything else on. W, turn on move multiple. Uh, it is in the middle at least. Man, oh man. Um, I'm going to rotate him 90 degrees or 180 degrees in this direction here. And then let's move him above the floor. Or no, he's just he's just completely upside down. So he's pointed the right way now, but now I have to flip him over. Okay. I don't know why I thought going through old files would be interesting. It just shows you how completely inept I was. Okay, <clears throat> so now he's facing the right way. Turn off move multiple. And then now, uh, if we did want to go through transpose, let's go ahead and save this, because damn. Uh, another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up this file, because it's just in case there's any, um, if there's any history, uh, not history, but uh, UVs or anything that I don't really need, um, I'm going to go ahead and make this file size a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go in here to clean tool utility. I'm going to delete all my morph targets. And then I'm going to delete all my layers. And then I'm going to delete all my UVs. And that may fix some of this stuff. And we'll go ahead and clear all of our masks. There we go. And then let's go ahead and do another save as we'll do a test. Um, let's see here. Cool. Thank you guys. Yeah. If you want, um, let me see. ZBrush Central. I don't really need any more. So if you do want to do like, you know, intro to ZBrush stuff, you can check that out. Here's a link to uh, the playlist on my YouTube channel. Then they're also here on my ArtStation page if you want to, you know, some of these are a little bit more broken down. So here's 2021.7, 2021.6, and uh, might be a little bit easier to navigate, I suppose. Give that a shot. Cool. Um, a lot of polygons can't continue sculpting that bug. Give me some help tips that reduce the amount of polygons, but keep the details. That would just be Decimation Master. Uh, this one right here. Z plugin. Decimation master preprocess current, let it preprocess and then decimate it down to something reasonable. And then if you want to add detail in specific areas, just go up here to Sculptors Pro with a small brush size, turn Z intensity down, or just use a smooth brush with a low Z intensity, and then you can just rebuild very specific areas where you want geometry to go. Or you can go into Ziri Mesher and use that to redistribute your geometry using. Here's Ziri Mesher. You can use uh, use Poly Paint, and then you can paint color density. Ziri Mesh, and then project your details back. That way, you can have polygons where you want them, and then some divide back up and project your details. Yes, like Geekman said. Um, yeah, that's a pretty cool utility. If you guys don't know that one, um, it's under Pixel Logics Downloads page. Cool. Yes, and so if you did want to, you know, you have to redistribute that geometry where you want it. So that would be, okay, we saved this, right? Oh yeah, I was doing a test, hold on. Yeah, okay, we knocked down 200 meg off that file by cleaning it up. Um, if you really want to clean stuff up, um, you can do a merge visible and then break it back apart. And sometimes that'll clean up even more weird gremlins that might be in your file. Um, but yeah, if you want to redistribute, uh, is this a good candidate for that? Probably not. But for example, a cylinder, we go through here and we say Control D a couple times, and we have X symmetry turned on, and we got a shape here. Let's go ahead and turn off L sim. We 
bit of clay build up here. Oh, beautiful, look at that. So we've got a face here and I wanna zero mesh it, but um, and I don't wanna lose my detail, but I also wanna have my detail right in the face and I don't really care what's going on back here. So then if before I zero mesh this, go down here to, well, first control tap this point in history so we have those verts. Go down here to use poly paint, color density set to two automatically. So I'm gonna go through, turn on RGB for my standard brush or use BPA, the paint brush. I'm gonna say, give me a bunch of polygons back here. And I'm gonna take this to color density, say 0.25. And then back here say, I don't want any poly density back here. I don't care about that. So now when I zero mesh with Xymetry turned on, uh, depth of size down, probably quite a bit. And then target polygon count of, I don't know, 1K, we'll hit zero mesh. And that'll go ahead and give us new geometry. And you see it's very light back here and very dense up here. So now I have those points stored in history. You can just do a project history, control D to subdivide, project history, control D to subdivide, project history, get all your detail back, control D to subdivide, project history, um, get your detail back. Oh, that didn't close. Well, I'll can fix that real quick. We know about free subdivision levels, close holes, unfree subdivision levels. And uh, if, it, if it ever picks up anything weird, you can go, It you know, it kind of, it, I think it just melted too much. What we can do is we can go to one side. Let's turn off X symmetry. Let's go BHR, history recall. And we can just literally use history recall to get this all cleaned up. I'm going to go about halfway. You have to turn off X symmetry to use this brush effectively or at all possibly if they change that. But I'm just using my camera angles. So we're going to smooth and then again, use project history to kind of get our detail pack. You're going to see back here, it's kind of aliased and chunky style. And then on the front, um, it's aliased and chunky style, but only because we, we projected from an aliased and chunky style. So we're going to go in here, we're going to hold down control and mask the half of the head that we like, and then do a deformation uh, smart resim to get back the other side of our mesh here, have X symmetry back on. So now we have subdivision history, but we have and let's go ahead and just do a quick smooth so you can see what I'm talking about here. So all this has been remeshed. Uh, it's all nice geometry, relatively speaking. And then if we're sculpting here, it's going to be no, sculpting. Is the intensity up? So if we're sculpting up here, it's a very nice uh, dense topology. If we're sculpting back here, it's chunky style, uh, aliased. Not great. So now you have subdivision history, which is great for this type of thing, because I can bump this down quite a bit. And then go like, oh, let's 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 uh, you know start really detailing in. Let's get some creepy detail going. I'm going to cut in this lip here, and we need some draft to this face. You know, the face goes around a cylinder, which I did a terrible job of. So we'll pull these lips around, and we'll give them the world's creepiest smile. We'll go in here and we'll fatten these cheeks up. He's really pushing that around. And then we'll go in here to Damien Standard and we can start playing around with these shapes here. But the whole point is just redistribu redistribution of your geometry so that, let's also go in here to your pinch brush. So that you can put those polygons where you need it. Now, if you get to a point where Totally gross. So um, you know, a little bit of a chin, just a just a hint of a chin. Now to your point, or to my point, I suppose, about using a decimation master, and it's you got say all this wonderful, beautiful detail that you don't want to um, lose, but you still want to use decimation master. This nose is bugging me. Um, what you can do is you can also redistribute your geometry like that. So we can go through here and let's go ahead and put some detail on here. So let's go to our standard brush. Let's change it to a spray stroke. And we're going to go in here and we're going to say alpha seven. So maybe we got some stubble detail. Let's go all the way up to level four here and drop that Z intensity way down. Yes, yes. I love it, it's getting grosser by the second. 
So uh, we have all this detail on here and we don't want to lose that, but we do want to decimate this down um, for whatever reason. So we're going to go in here to Z plugin, preprocess current. Uh, oops, decimation master, preprocess current. And let that do its thing for a minute. And if you don't need these this point in history anymore, just control tap the latest and then control tap it again. Uh, now that we've done that, we can say how many polygons we want. So let's say 50K, hit decimate current. And if that's too low, you don't have to pre-process again. Let's say 150K, decimate current. Okay, that's a little smoother. And now it's, you know, made this, um, it's looked at your topology. Now, the only problem with this is your Ziri mesh, I don't know, on the lowest may have done an actual better job of making sure you don't have any extraneous geo. But now that we've done this and say, oh, you know what? I want to go back in and put wrinkles on the side of his head. Well, when you go through here, um, it's actually not terrible. Let's drop this even lower so you can say... Let's drop it actually down to 50K. There we go, way down. So now if we go through here and we try to put wrinkles on the side of the head, it's a little bit messy. So I'm gonna hold down Shift, turn on Sculptures Pro, turn our Z intensity down, turn on Poly Frame so you can see what we're doing. Now I'm just gonna add some geometry in here. It's not gonna change your forms any, but it's just gonna add geometry where I need it. And then I can go in here to Damien Standard. And now we got plenty of geo to go through here and you know do whatever we need to. Same thing here, let's add some geo in here and then build up and you can you can use your brushes with sculptures pro but if you've already kind of set up your base to use this you can go through here now and do a little sculptures pro um, oh turn your z intensity back up and then you can decimate this back down if you want to Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know how to set the title. I figured that was the case, uh, but when I go to Restream now, they changed it up on me. So it just goes to, what would you like to do? Um, okay, streaming monitor, destinations chat, switch, encoder. Oh, update titles. Haha. <laughs> okay, give me a sec. Let's fix this real quick. Okay, I found it. I was too afraid to click buttons. I didn't know what they did. Uh, give me a sec. Stream. Stream. Pavlovich Workshop ZBrush 2022. That's what mine is. Boom. Update. There we go. I don't know if that'll pop up anytime soon, but it's been updated. Sorry about that. Um, focal shift and depth mask. Yeah, it's a. Let's go ahead and you know what? Let's just use Dynamesh. We can get this all redistributed. Another way to redistribute your geometry. So uh, if we have, we're just going through here and we're sculpting, um, and then we want to do a focal shift. So if I want to say, you know what, I want to stamp some stuff. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to change this to drag dot. I'm going to give myself a star alpha and I go through and I try to stamp stars on his head. See how it kind of fades at the sides. Well, if you take your focal shift to negative 100, now it's going to go straight back. Essentially, that's like a built in fall off. Um, another way to describe this is if I go in here to with the soft, soft alpha um, and focal shift of zero. Actually, no alpha. So if I do no alpha and I'm and I'm doing a kind of a stroke, um, see that middle ring? So if I tap S and make this really big, there's that middle ring in here. That's your focal shift. And so you can push it out towards the edge or you can push it out towards the middle. And that's basically the fall off from your brush stroke to just the edge of your stroke. So now you're going to see it's kind of broad. And if I do focal shift of negative 100, now it's going to go all the way to the edge. Give you a nice little little effect there. Uh, but the most obvious way to kind of just describe that is drag dot, give yourself any alpha that goes all the way uh, to an edge like this. And then when you drag it out, so I'm hit control D. So you drag this out with focal shift and you, if you drag this up, it's gonna be even more faded. Cause again, it's just fading out. That focal shift is just very broad. So it's like a built-in alpha um, and then you can bring it all the way to negative 100 and that'll allow you to uh, do that now this is different than the focal shift from move which has been updated so if i hit w and we can 
remove this guy, right? If I go here to focal shift, and that's set at negative 100 by default. If we crank this up and then drag, it's gonna give you a fall off for your move brush. So if I move this around, it's gonna kind of pull based on, again, I'll hold down Alt and, remove, and move this. Um, let's turn off X symmetry. So we can kind of go through and kind of twist the face. So the lower that is, if it's at negative 100, it just rotates. If it's lower, um, it'll have a very large fall off here. And then if we, as we make this gradually higher, it's lessening that area of influence here. So now it's just in the face and then all the way up. I think if you go up to 100, it won't quite work, but then now it's just the tip of the nose. But if we make it like 80, now it'll grab the front of the face. But I need a little more influence. No, not that much. There we go, now we're talking. Is this what I like? Is this what we need? Just a squishy shoe face? Yes, that's perfect. Okay, and now we're just back here in Dynamesh mode. And then we can go through here and, but you know, another thing too you can do real quick is if you've been messing around with brushes too much, you can just reset your current or reset all and then go back to our Damien standard brush. I like to do, like to do a quick mirror and weld in the X axis, geometry modified topology mirror and weld, just in case. And then let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of that nostril. So hold down Alt with your Damien standard brush and then go back in with your clay, build up your clay brush and, um, or our damn, damn standard O2. We can give that a shot as well. And really, he's got quite an underbite. So let's go to the side here. And I'm just gonna mask, lasso his face. Control tap to blur that a little bit. And I'm gonna take this jaw. I'm gonna inflate just a bit. Control drag, control drag again, and then let's use our trusty Damien standard brush. Yes, yes. I'm gonna have a fun time making a thumbnail for this video. <laughs> what did you do today, Mike? Well. Hard to explain, but here's an abomination for you. So we'll go through here and we'll kind of cut this back in. We can use our clay build up, just continue to read Dynamesh. And then again, if we wanted to redistribute that geometry with Z Remesher or anything else, you know exactly how it's done already. Go ahead and plump these lips up here. Yes, perfect. And then down here, let's cut in just a little bit here. And then again, Damien Standard. We'll go ahead and put a little lip line on the bottom here. Let's go ahead and... There's a, there's a Jessica Rabbit in Toontown impersonator that uh, kind of reminds me of this. And we'll go ahead and... All right, we did it, everybody. Nostril here. Cool, quick save. Okay, get caught up. Um, yes, I do read the chat. Uh, what do you think about Dynamesh? Do you use it or not? Uh, do I use Dynamesh? Yeah. <laughs> do, do people not use Dynamesh? Uh, what's the difference between alpha and uh, ball relief? Uh, we can get an alpha from the document as well, right? Can you please elaborate why you would choose one over the other? One easy way is, uh, so we got this, oh man, I'm so glad I made this. So we have this awesome head here and I want to put that on a coin. So go in here to cylinder, make poly mesh 3D. Let's go ahead and scale this down. And I'm going to go in here to geometry edge loop 
delete loops and let's go through here and let's say polygroup poly loop and polygroup oh, q mesh polygroup all we'll go ahead and pull this out and pull this out so now we have a little place now i do eh, before we do that let's you know i'm just going to take this one here judge modified topology delete hidden x symmetry turned on here and you know what let's do let's see if this will work transform in the x and z and then we're going to do a quick zero mesh double depth size down there we go and then now i'm going to say q mesh polygroup ball we'll give ourselves a little bit of thickness here so now we have a coin that it might behave a little bit better Oop, we have a little bit extra no problem control shift drag control shift a geometry modified topology delete hidden go ahead and say crease pg crease level of two smooth so div of three and then we'll hit apply so now we have a coin that we want to put this person's head on. Now you're right, we could go, I don't even know where I am in space with this thing. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so for instance, if you want to create a alpha uh, bar relief, we can go through here and we can say, uh, make a bar relief based on what's in here. And this is going to, let's go ahead and set this to drag rect. So there's our bar relief. Now, if we, if we wanted to go, well, let's do a three quarter view. So we got this, there we go. So there's our bar relief and we can go through and we can drag that out. Let's go ahead and crank up that Z. In well, actually we don't even need to. We can say, keep your Z intensity, whatever you want. And then you can go through here. Oh, and also focal shift comes into play here. So do this and then you can just adjust last and you can make this more or less relief. Now, um, if you were to go through here and do like an MRGB Z grabber, which will grab your alpha, say so always switch, that'll drop it to your canvas and then you can literally just grab this as an alpha. That's just Z depth. There's no detail there, it's just the high points and the low points. So if I go back to my mesh here, um, and I say, give me that alpha grab, um, and then I drag this out of my, it's, there's, there's nothing there. However, since you have that alpha grab, you can convert this. It's down here under make bar relief. That'll take your alpha and then convert it to a relief with actual detail on it. Um, and the other cool thing too is the ability to go, hey, you know what? Give me that coin because I don't want to have to deal with, this is where it gets, it can get a little bit squirrely is if you hit W and then control tap this Really? Hold on. Auto groups. Jeez. W, uh, control tap this in here. Let's turn off X symmetry. Uh, so we just have this side open. And then I go back here to my um, bar relief that I captured. And then I try to drag this out. Let's go ahead and control D a couple more times. W, control tap, Q, draw. So now we're. <laughs> <laughs> draw this head. I love this head so much. So I draw this on my canvas um, And it's kind of it may be kind of difficult to position. It's like, oh, it's not perfectly centered There's ways around that you can hit W to go in transpose mode You can load up your relief hit Y to go into transpose and then when you drag out you hold down control and drag it out You can go through and you can kind of reposition however, as you can see um, it, it does tend to kind of want to squash so if I invert this and then we just use deformation inflate, we can kind of inflate through here and then we can do an, again an adjust last. Although that adjust last is going to be getting rid of my mass, so that's not going to work. You have to save a layer. So you can position it like this. Make sure you're not, um, you just had, um, if you have it in here, just go through and hold down control, mask pin, just unmask this side. So now we can go through. You can put, you can put it like this. However, instead of doing that, you can say, you know what? I'm just gonna take this one, duplicate it off, because we want that one. Let's hit Y, turn off X symmetry, and I'm just going to position this like so. So I can put this head exactly where I want it. And then back on my coin here, and again, I can overshoot it too. If I'm like, you know what? I need it to gently kiss the edge of the coin. I can put it like so. And then for the coin here again, I'm just going to mask where I want that to show up. And then we can go down here to subtool project bar relief. And that'll go ahead and take whatever subtool you have here and then project it back. And then you can 
do an adjust last so you can get it more or less or you can play around with those settings to do what you need um, of course all of this can be found in the latest zebras 2022 what's new right up here Bar relief alpha and project turn any creation into a release sculpt easily so check that out and then uh, right here zebras 2022 what's new on my art station page Cool. I'm using 2022.04. Always get the latest. I do, anyways. I have to. I gotta know what all the new stuff is. Um. Yeah, I always said it uh, bass relief too, and then I looked it up on Wikipedia, and it's like bah. <laughs> um. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Um. Glad the videos are helping out. Uh, we're going to find the adjust last settings. That'll be right here. Um, if it uh, is that under stroke? Oh, sorry, it's auto saving. Stroke, you have replay last, replay last relative, interpolate strokes count, and adjust last in your stroke menu. Um, and that's another fun one, too, is that on our. Let's go ahead and delete our coin out of here. So on this one, if we want to. So we went through here and we said, okay, give us a standard brush and give us uh, a drag dot stroke and give us an alpha 06. And, and if you're gonna be messing around with the standard brush, this might be a better idea too. So brush, reset, or all brushes are current brush. Take the standard brush and clone it off so it has its own brush settings. And then you can say, you know, we'll do a drag dot. And again, we'll give it that alpha stroke. So now we can go through here and change the focal shift on here, crank the Z intensity up, uh, turn, Lazy mouse off with L. So now we can go through and we can stamp uh, alpha detail. Now, um, if you want to, you can stamp an alpha detail, then you can hit one on your keyboard and it'll replay last from that exact position. Um, or you can hold down Alt and then one. So whatever you did last, it'll replay last. Uh, replay last relative, you're gonna see is shift one. So you can go through here and you can put on a stamp stroke here and here, and then you can uh, move your uh, you can't move your camera because if you do that it's going to go back so it's going to be weird so if you're not going to move your camera you can go here 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 and then wherever you put uh, this is a bad example let's do this plane make poly mesh 3d let's subdivide there we go control shift slice circle let's go ahead and make this a square uh, so we can go through here and we can slice circles. In fact, you can hold down control shift and then spacebar, put on a little brush radius. So now we got, let's make our brush radius a little bit smaller. So now we've got uh, this. So if we want to replay last, we can hit one, but we can do replay last relative with the shift one. So no matter where we put our brush, it'll go ahead and just use the last settings um, to do whatever you need to do. So now you can go through here and you can say, give me this and then give me this. Um, eh, what would we need to do? Any Anything cool we can make out of this? Nah, not really. Delete hidden. Zero mesh half, depth size down to zero. That'll go ahead and resolve some of those edges for us. Um, actually, half might be a little much. Let's do double. And then do half. There, that's better. And then Q mesh. Oh, let's do this. Let's go in here. I'm going to say bend arc. We're going to bend this around, we can change that radius if we need to. And then now we can go there, Q mesh, polygroup all. And then we can say inset polygroup all legacy here. And then let's do another inset and let's say Q mesh. Hold down shift, crease PG, crease level of two, smooth so div of three. Now we got a little bent, little armor piece or something or something uh, as far as the adjust last settings oh that's another thing too is you can you can do you can adjust back through multiple so if you have a if you did a line here well, let's do this you did a line here you did a line here here and here it's like oh, i wish i could adjust last but it's only going to adjust that last stroke you can go back through your history control tap that point in history my history is getting nuts hold on just a second let's undo that 
I'm going to go up here to edit. I'm going to say delete older history. So now, uh, one more time, we're going to go through here and I want to say, uh, uh, the face is so perfect. I just, I can't bring myself, let's go to the back. Um, so I have this stroke here and this stroke here and this stroke here. And I want to adjust all of these. Just go back in your history to back before you did that one, control tap that point in history, and now when you adjust last any strokes you've made since that point in history, you can actually go out or in or whatever. You can adjust last multiple. So again, control tap, control tap again uh, to get rid of that history. This is actually live. <laughs> um, try importing an SVG file and you're saying it doesn't work on my updated version without failures anymore. Uh, I don't trying to remember let's go to my YouTube channel here vector mesh do I have that in here damn um, SVG and text options do I have it in here damn uh, I used to have um, like logos and stuff you could download. I don't have access to a ton of SVG files just off the top of my head. I don't do that very often. Um, okay, getting caught up. And if I miss something, hi from Sweden. Hey, Darius. Uh, what does adaptive size and Ziri mesher actually exactly do? So if we have um, a cylinder here and we say make poly mesh 3D, and you know what, let's go ahead and say group by normal so that we have polygroups on there. And then we would go through here with geometry, Z remesher. Um, and we have adaptive size down to zero. That's going to look at everything and give us even quads. And in fact, let's go ahead and say keep group, smooth groups down to zero because it's already smooth. And now um, it's going to try to give us nice even quads. Uh, if you have adaptive size up and you do Z remesher, uh, well, in this case, it does exactly the same thing. Let me think of a better example. Okay, let's do this. Let's do, let me go back to our head. Perfect. Uh, okay, this is fine. So let's go back down here. So again, I'm going to control tap this point in history so I have these details. And it's like, okay, this is a beautiful head, but we need just new geometry. So I'm going to go down here to zero mesher, and we're going to say adaptive size down to zero, use poly paint off, target polygon on count of one, and turn on our poly frame with X symmetry turned on so we can see what it's doing. And when it does this, it adapts size of zero. It's going to try to keep your quads really even. And when I set a target polygon kind of 1,000, it's going to get pretty close to that. Um, so you're going to see eh, well, 1,600 points. So yeah, how many polygons is this exactly? 1,600 polys. Okay. Well, so you can see everything's really nice and even. Nice, even quads in here. If you undo that and you crank up your adaptive size, any any form changes in your head, any drastic changes, it's going to go, oh, you know what? You probably want to keep those edges around so you have, you know, we give you a little bit more of a precise result on the edges. Um, so here you can see it's, you know, more precise around the lips, a little bit better built around the nose. However, instead of 16, we're up here at 2400. So depending on how much detail you want to capture or if you want nice even quads versus, you know, kind of build in detail as you see it. Uh, that would be adaptive size. But if we like this, we can just go ahead and hit, uh, so we store that point in history. So again, project all that's under your project menu, subtool, project history, and then control D to subdivide, and then project history, control D to subdivide, project history, control D to subdivide, and project history. So now we're back, we have all our details back, but now we have subdivision history, so we can UV it, uh, we can pose it out a little bit easier, we can go back and work on our secondary forms. Um, let me get rid of this. These gills on the back. Like so. So that's adaptive size. Uh, is there a way to use curve as a guide to smooth a bumpy, pinched hard surfaces like your apinator kind of surface? Um, speaking of, let's look at that. Let's go here to... I need to find it real quick. Demo, demo, demo.
open path. There we go, date modified. Let's see what this brings up. Oh, do I have a window open? Yes, damn. I got a bunch of low res. Let's say so. If I do auto reorder, that's going to put all my high res stuff at the top, all my low res stuff at the bottom. So now I can quickly go through. Oops, I need that one though. Okay, it was just one. Let's do all high. D for dynamic. All right, so here's the Apinator, uh, the G800. And if you want to print this out, if you'd like, that's on my YouTube channel. Oh, just recently, if we go here to videos. So we did an Elegoo uh, follow along. So just printing out with the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. And then up here on the Nova Benny 5, um, we did the Apinator. So if you go to the description of these, you can download the Gorilla Skull files or and or since we did both on this one, I'll just give you this one. You can go to the Gorilla Skull files and the Mechanical Gorilla Skull files. So you can download this and do whatever you want to with it. Um, but as far as, oh, and there is a, there is a, is there a series on this? Yes. Um, yeah, Mechanical Skull series. So you can check that out if you want. But anyway, um, using curves to cut in hard surface detail. You can, but you would need, um, well, there's like there's a couple ways to do that, I suppose. So if we go in here to BC brush chisel here, and you can kind of use this to carve in hard surface detail. Let's go ahead and make our brush size a little smaller. Z intensity, let's control tap this to get rid of that history in our file. So we have uh, this hard surface detail and we could maybe assign a stroke to this. So we can go in here to stroke, a mod of uh, do, 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 curve mode. And then as we drag on this brush, it'll have a curve. And then as we touch this curve to update it, it'll go through and it'll try to, you know, put this hard surface along a curve. But one thing we definitely need to do with this curve is make sure we have bend start and bend end turned on. Um, and then now that still wants to jump out, huh? Hmm. Also, let's take that lazy stroke way down. Curve mode, um, lazy mouse, jeez. Yeah, there's better brushes for that, I suppose, like B, D, uh, displace curve. You can go through here and put a curve on here. Um, curve mode, bend start, bend end, jeez. I'm not sure why it's wanting to do that. I'll have to, I, I don't I don't play with these very much. So as far as cutting in hard surface shapes with a curve, I usually want a little bit more control than that. So for example, what I might do is duplicate this off, go through here and be like, hey, I'm gonna hold down control. I'm gonna turn on back face masking for that. It's under your um, auto masking options and your brushes. So I wanna put a hard surface line around this area right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say edge loop mask border under geometry and then isolate this and then just say delete hidden. In fact, you could even zero mesh this depth slice down here and just to get you, cause you can literally just use a Boolean to kind of you know cut through something. So that's probably what I would end up doing is just quick Q mesh, polygroup all, Q mesh this out and then uh, Q, uh, let's do this. Q mesh this out, but tap alt so we get new polygroups. So now I can Q mesh this back and now I've got something I can just stamp through. So I can turn this to subtractive, turn on my Boolean, and then just push this on back through. And then we could even do like, you know, crease PG, uh, dynamic turned on nice and smooth. And then if I ever need to, I have access to, you know, Q mesh this a little bit wider. Um, we can go to the bottom here and we can say, you know what, let's inset polygroup all, eh, let's do polygroup island, legacy, Oof, all right, let's do this. Polygroup here, inset, let's crease PG. Okay, inset, polygroup island. Uh, one more time, Q 
Q mesh. Uh, let's pull this down a little bit. Again, crease PG. Let's do crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. So now when we punch this in, that'll be the thing. And you can even, it's live, so you can go through here and you can adjust this as needed too, if you needed. Um, but, and I wanna say that's how I did this one here. Um, but you could use that as a brush stroke too, if you if you were insistent on using curves or if curve brushes were your jam. So basically this here, and we're just gonna take this top one here, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Uh, let's do an auto. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna grab, let's turn on double display properties, double display properties at the very bottom. Geometry modified topology, delete hidden, uh, then turn double off. And then now you can go in here to stroke, um, curve functions, say polygroups, frame mesh. And then if you wanna go here, brush, let's see, brush insert, army bike chain. You can now put an army bike chain down this curve here. Um, let's go ahead and tap off. Let's go ahead and say split mass points. Um, no, split hidden is Oh, we need X turned off. Turn X off. There we go. Tap off. Um, do we have X symmetry? All right, well, let's just grab a little piece of this. Control Shift A, split, oops, split hidden. And then now we can turn this off here select this we can make this live boolean if we wanted to hit w move it back uh, but you can use just if you can make geometry and then you can zero mesh it and get a path for that geometry um it'll work sorry i was throwing some weird stuff at zbrush there uh let's go back to the chat is there an option for manual uv mapping in zbrush um Z UV master. Um, I don't need to open any of that stuff up. Actually, let's do this. Let's load tools from project. I'm going to go to ZBrush data, quick save, recovered. I'm going to see if I have any, any tools in here I want to grab. Um, Uh, clean 3D alphas will never try to make scales and skin details. They look very messy, especially around the alpha. Um, yeah. Let's see here. So, out of edit mode. Yeah, you know, we don't need any of that. Delete all. So, scales, repeating scales. Um, I would probably use VDM. So well, I guess one easy way to do a VDM is plain 3D, edit, make poly mesh 3D, and then go down here to geometry and then just say reconstruct down to just um, a perfect plane, has to be a perfect plane. And then we can go ahead and uh, subdivide this, turn smooth modifier off, and then turn X symmetry on. And we'll just grab a mask lasso here and then control tap to blur that out, invert that. And then we can just grab a um, you just do like a little scaly guy. And in fact, you could go, you know, kind of div, dig in and then dig out. Um, it's, it's a vector displacement, which means, um, let's go down here to mask our open border. And then I'm going to grow that mask and then control tap to yeah, just grow that mask. I just don't want to mess with that. Um, if I can help it and then go back down here to mask pin, let's go ahead and drop our subdivisions down, Ooh, not that many, a little bit. So now we got a little bit of an overhang for this scale here. If you ever need to morph your grid back if you accidentally tweaked it, uh, I think there is a deformation for that. Uh, morph to grid, yeah. So you can just mask out whatever you don't want it to morph and then you can just say morph back to grid. Uh, so now that we have this thing, 
let's go back up in our subdivision levels here. So we have a scale and it's got an underhang. And then we want to capture this uh, to our brush. I'm going to go here, B, C, brush creature. And then I'm going to say, oh, how do I do this? Create. Uh, from mesh. Yeah. So that went ahead and threw this in here. So now we have a multi alpha brush with a scale in here. So if I go back to this awesome thing, uh, we can go through and we can start adding scales. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit control D so we can get a little bit of a better thing on there. So now we're adding scales in here. One thing you would consider is you can use your focal shift. If you have focal shift to negative 100, um, let's do this higher. I'm trying to get a crappy. There's ways you can finesse um, alphas to cylinder edit, make poly mesh 3D. Let's have a little bit of fun with this one. You can Z modeler it, but let's say we're not in the mood for that. So turn on, uh, let's go ahead and say crease, dynamic, apply, and then just immediately go in here to Dynamesh. And then let's go in here to transform, activate symmetry in the Y, radial count up. And now you can go through here and just be like, kill this and then clay brush out a little bit here smooth um, what else we want to do Damien standard cut in H polish let's drop this down to radio count of like six clay brush EI brush insert industrial parts Split mass points, let's hit D for dynamic. Um, increase level of two, smooth subdiv of three maybe. So now we've got an alpha we wanna capture. Um, and let's make this, yeah, that's fine. So we have this here and then um, a couple different ways we could do this. Let's let's be precise. We could do an MRGBZ grabber, but we can also go in here to document, turn off proportional. We could say 1024 by 1024. I mean, this is gonna be tiny. Let's just do 512, 512. By 512, resize, uh, yes, control N, there we go. So now we can position this exactly in our document uh, where we want it to go, or we can just hit F to frame the big one here. Now let's back that off slightly. So now we're gonna go in here to alpha. Now this one, we're not gonna do a, a bar relief. We're just gonna capture this alpha. So we're gonna go alpha, um, we could do from mesh and that'll just capture the alpha and we can go ahead and zoom this back a little bit and say okay uh, but you can also do alpha grab doc i think create modify alpha grab doc am i crazy there it is alpha grab doc and that'll also just grab this so now that you have an alpha go back here uh, let's go in here to document let's turn on w size new And then we'll go back here to drag rect. Um, and then again, that focal shift down. And our C intensity up. And then if this is getting a little ch too chewed around the edges, you can play around with your focal shift to see if you can't, you know, this, this, this now nah, focal shift to negative 100 isn't gonna really help you there. Uh, alpha, you can do a radial fade and that'll kind of fade out the edges a little bit but you know in this case probably not so really you're in this case you're probably just looking for resolution to get you uh what you're going for here um so if you're just talking about like i'm getting it kind of ratty around the edges radial fade or focal shift and radial fade you can tweak those settings um i mean we do have that now so if we go back in here to brush uh, chisel oops, creature and instead of a drag rect we want to do a uh, dot stroke we can use this um, will give us our alpha there we go and let's turn off god that lazy radius is so intense and then let's go back up here to lazy step to maybe 0.25 in our Z intensity way down. There we go. So now we can 
drag in these um, scales. Of course, there's also a ton of scales up here. Uh, if we go in here to scales, they have some alphas in here you can steal. So there's cool alphas you can you can steal on that one. Uh, scales B, no, no. And all of these have their own own settings that you can check out. Scales fish, there we go. So this has a repeating scales on this one. Or something like that. Um, oh yeah, and then manual UV. So if we want to UV this thing, we have X symmetry turned on. Uh, I'm going to go over here to... I mean, you won't be able to do it like face by face or anything. Uh, but Z plugin, UV master, symmetry, poly groups, work on clone. And then if I want to control this a little bit, like, hey, you know what? I do want this to all be part of the same island, just make it a poly group. Um, and I do want the nose to be in its own island, just make it a poly group. So we have symmetry turned on, we have poly groups turned on. We can say unwrap and then flatten. We can hit W. Oh, we can hit W, you can control tap these. And uh, I wonder if that's because I got that old grandpa thing or if something weird's going on. Um, then you can unwrap and then you can copy those UVs back. And I'm just gonna keep my ZBrush session fresh. I'm having some crashing this morning. I don't know if it's 04 or just me. Uh, I told a beginner, can you recommend Sculpt for practice? Want to try things my own without following a tutorial? Yeah, uh, pick pick anything. Google Images, just grab something and be like, okay, I want to break this problem down. Um, I do have something. I guess I could. Let me see. CGMA. Um, I can show you real quickly. It's something I use on uh, my CGMA class. Let's see, quick demos. So for example, uh, you know, something like this that looks really complicated, um, basically go through and just break it down to its component parts. And by that, I don't mean like, oh, you know, how do I weave this geometry intricately uh, into this shape and have it match over here and have a meetup over here, literally break it down into um, its, its base component parts. So I'm going through here and I'm looking at, okay, this is just a repeating shape like this. So all I really need is this shape and this shape. It's a twisted uh, torus that I can repeat over and over again. And you don't even have to put it in an IMM brush. You can literally just control drag it out. But here I am, you know, just basically twisting this out, doubling it up, and then you can turn this into an IMM brush or just, again, just control drag it out. So that way, and again, you don't need to be like, oh wait, how does this one, does it come off here and connect? You can always bridge that geometry later. So basically breaking down your complex problem into very, very bite-sized small problems to solve. And the overall hat shape is just a, a you know, like elongated cylinder, you know, so that's pretty easy. Some of the stuff might be a little bit more brute forcey. Like you have to go ahead and make the shape and extrude it and then go in and sculpt and stamp stuff. So it's not going to be you know, automatic, um, but yeah, just pick something and then just break it down to its really basic component shapes and give it a shot. Cool. Um, let's see here. Make polymesh 3D, uh, control D to subdivide. So if we have, we have RGB turned on and we can paint blue on here sub tool turn poly paint on so you can paint blue you can also uh, sculpt and paint at the same time you can also go in here and you can apply material so we can say color fill object with mrgb turned on like so and then we have a uh, color and material applied and if we go through here we can say just rgb so just update and we'll turn off z add so just rgb now we're just painting with RGB, like so. If we want to paint with materials, just switch your material up just to MRGB or just M, and you can paint with that material. This is like, if you guys are like brand, brand new to ZBrush, um, let's see. 
Look for that weirdo Conan O'Brien looking dude. This is intro to ZBrush, 50 videos. It'll tell you how the, just the bare bones minimum of ZBrush works. How to load stuff up, what poly painting is, what a material is. Then I'll get you cut up. Cool. Thank you, Morty, for the kind words. Uh, any tips of dynamically posing models, lots of subtools without being struck and merging all, oh, blow the problem. Yeah. So we were actually doing that earlier. Let's do that. So I'll go to my desktop here. There we go. Let's go back to startup material, white, control N, clear our canvas. So we've got a subtool with a lot of subtools. Blast from the past. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is pare this down so that anything I can move into place later uh, as, a, as a whole, I don't need to worry about. So I'm just going to go ahead and, again, just make my life a little bit easier just by turning off some of this stuff. So this leg plate I can move into place later. These straps I can pose separately. Just the stuff that's kind of stuck to his body. I want to go ahead and... Boy, what the hell is that thing? Oh, I accidentally did something. You know what? You're deleted. Okay. Uh, so we have our, oh, and this thing too can go away. So we have our basic model here with a bunch of subtools that we want to pose out. So Z plugin, uh, transpose master, T pose mesh. And that's going to take everything and drop it to its lowest subdivision level. And now we can go through here and pose this guy out. So what's a cool pose? Um, I'm going to go through here, hold down control, and we're going to say mask lasso. And we're just going to grab under his armpit here, control tap to invert that, and we'll just move this down a little bit here. Uh, and usually, you know, you probably want to start from the middle of the body. So we're going to go through here, uh, right through the waist, control tap, and then um, we'll give him a little bit of a, oops, let's go ahead and set this to the middle. Um, so he can lean and maybe twist a little bit here and then control tap to invert that will twist him the other way and then uh, if he's leaning that way let's lean this here and then for his leg you can you can try like control dragging down but it's only going to do it for his pants so you just need to be careful that like everything also needs to follow along because it's just a bunch of layered stuff now so control drag here and then we'll kind of we'll pop this leg out and um, maybe turn it. So I'm just alt dragging and moving this so we can kind of set it. And then if you do need to, you can go through here. It made a different poly group for every uh, subtool that you had. So now we can just go through here and we can say, you know what? Give me this ankle here, bring everything else back. Give me this one. I just want to mask this bottom part out and I bet you could make your own polygroups in here I don't know that for a fact I don't mess with this too much but um, oh, and we're missing his interior of his body here there we go so now all three of these we can move at once so and uh, so now he's leaning let's go ahead and take his head and his teeth Let's isolate this, just make it a little bit easier. Head, teeth, invert W. Let's go ahead and put it here in the middle of his neck, here. And uh, what can he be doing with this arm? He could be waving. Hey, how's it going? Waving to his neighbor neighborly. The only problem with that is uh, you're probably going to have to reconfigure quite a bit of this geometry here. So it's just something to keep in mind. I'm going to take his arm now and we're going to grab him by his elbow. Bring everything else back. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do? We want to grab these. There we go. 
and his arm is very low res, which is okay. I can still go through and, you know, sculpt any correctives that I need to. We'll give that a shot. And, you know, I guess something that always comes up too is like, oh, how come it doesn't do a perfect job on muscles and stuff? Well, you're really just pulling around verts. Um, so it's not like there's a muscle sim in there with bones and weights painted and all that stuff. But if you did want to do that, then you'd have to rig the entire thing, which I guarantee you would be a little bit more intensive and a little bit more knowledge needed and a little bit longer than mushing verts around. So, you know, it, yes, a perfect rig would do a better job, but a perfect rig uh, probably take a little bit longer. So I'm going to grab his hand here. Mask. Um, let's just mask across here. Invert that. And then we'll tilt this back. And then uh, maybe a little thumb open. And then, uh, hey, you know, you're going to kind of, you're going to do the two finger here. And then these are going to kind of curl down. Now, this low res that I have is incredibly like too low res maybe. Um, give consider that too. Um, maybe give yourself a little bit more wiggle room. Granted, I made this um, more than a decade ago, so cut me some slack. And then this is gonna curve in a little bit more. So I'm gonna grab this hand here and just mask here. Hand, pinky. What am I trying to do? So I want to, so if you just want to mask just the pinky, mask just the pinky, bring everything else back, control tap, and now we can move this here. And I'm gonna say the middle finger is gonna be out towards Hey, how's it going? So now we're going to go over here from Tipo's mesh to subtobe sub Tipto. Uh, so we'll move this over. And that's another thing too, is when I was posing him out, I did have a monster uh, shoulder pad on that side. So that'll be interesting to see if I can resolve that. But now it'll go through. And uh, as far as the non-destructive part, you can literally, when you, ex when you send this back over, turn on groups. Is it groups? And you can turn on layer. And that will add a layer that you can turn on and off for every single subtool that you moved so that um, you can um, go back and just, like I said, turn on and off uh, any posing that you did. So now, I mean, there's again, there's going to be some cleanup. So we can go down here. We do have sediment history, so we can say, you know, sediment level one, um, go through here. And in fact, I bet I could probably get, I was so frugal back in the day. I bet I could get another subdivision reconstructed out of this if I wanted to. I guarantee it goes lower. So yeah, just a little bit of cleanup. And then, you know, of course, where the elbow bends, uh, let's bring this back here. You can go through here and we'll drop down like seven level two and go into solo mode. Yeesh. Z add. Um, clay brush or clay build up, move brush, and then just kind of work your way back up through your details just to make sure that we have an elbow present in here. Because again, that, that low res was so low, I couldn't bend without, you know, trying to keep some of the stuff a little bit more in place. Get your reference out, bent elbow, and uh, just match it up. I'm trying to go slowly through so I don't lose or modify too much of my surface detail. But a lot of that stuff is going to change because when you have a big leathery elbow and then you pose it, um, you know, it could do some stuff. Uh, also, when we bend the arm here, you know, that's going to kind of here and then it's out towards. So it is going to be, it's not going to be like pointed and peaked. It's going to be kind of flat through here. And just, oops. Uh, turn off X symmetry for everything. 
There we go. So probably anatomy first, go through and make sure you know, that, that the stuff is all right-ish. And then when you go back and put your straps back on. Um, and I have all my straps like built in for some reason. Control Shift A. So yeah, little little corrective areas just to kind of go and clean up. Not super exciting to watch though, so I'll probably stop now and get my coffee. Um, never export an object from ZBrush and import it into Maya. After making some changes, I export the object when I bring the object back in ZBrush's position is different. Hmm. That can be, that can do, it can do some weird bounding box stuff whenever I'm importing. I guess I can just load that up and see how long it takes me to load this up. Um, this is kind of a hacky workaround. Um, but I'll let you, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what the hacky workaround is. Uh, to unwrap if you want to put some stripe, how could you achieve that? You'd have to manually go through and um, it, it, the good news is the unwrap is just polygon. So whatever polygon operations you want to do to straighten something out or to mask the edges or to relax the verts, you can do in UV unwrap. Um, bad news is it, it doesn't really, it's not like a UV um, pelt map or anything like, I mean, you can't, just go in and do that. It's really set up to be like, hey, I have this thing, I want to have put UVs on it generally in this area and let me go, as opposed to let me hand massage and tweak these UVs forever. So for example, you can use GoZ, uh, and that should do a pretty decent job. But for example, if I want to take, uh, I'm just trying to find something that would be off kilter here, there we go. So let's take this down to sudden level one. And I'm going to clone it off here. Turn on our floor. Okay, so uh, export this as a, I'm 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 partial to FBX, and I think I might actually do a better job. But we'll do a test FBX here, and then uh, we can. Oh, come on. Oh, it's not going to let me move the... Okay, so I have a menu down here I can't move, but uh, I'm going to say all is fine. Or we can just do selected. Uh, smooth normal is okay. So we have this. Let me go in here to File, Import, um, Desktop, F. Uh, so we want to make changes to this. Uh, take some verts and move them around and take a face and... Um, extrude it, I guess. Uh, okay, so we have an object here and we've updated it. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to say File, Export, Selection. And we're going to put this on our desktop and we're going to say Done Stuff. Now one thing you can do is uh, if you did an OBJ, you can literally import it over these verts and it'll replace them. But let's see if we can get this thing to move. So Import, here. So yeah, this one. And we say uh, insert here. Yeah, everything seems fine. Uh, you know, we move these verts in mind, we extruded this face, everything lines up okay. However, if we try this, if we say, okay, let's do this, let's go export. Instead of FBX, let's do an OBJ because I'm trying to break it. And we'll go on our desktop here. Let me go into Maya. Oh yeah, damn. Forgot on OBJs it likes to split everything up into polygroups. <laughs> okay. Control W.
Okay. Did I really not grab all of them? Or is it just not done? Okay. Import. There we go. I don't know what was that that was all about but okay we have this and we want to make some changes let's go ahead and hit b so we have a okay, i don't remember how to do that we got a soft selection here we're going to move some verts out and move some verts out we're going to take a face and we're going to extrude it okay so we've done some stuff file export selection so instead of an fbx we're going to do an obj And then back in here, insert, this is what we started with, uh, I think, OBJ test, ah, oh, damn, that's the right, that's, works on my machine, what can sometimes happen though, uh, and this, I don't know if this still happens or just just an old thing. What I would sometimes do in a pinch is go create uh, polygon primitives cube, just right down the middle of my scene, scale it up so the bounding box encompassed everything, and then I just exported all these things um, just to make sure that this was the bounding box that was picking up the middle of my world and it wasn't scooting anything anywhere. Um, I don't know that that's really the case here. Everything seemed to work fine here. But um, also, one thing you can check is underneath geometry position, you can make you can see if anything needs to be zeroed out. Like sometimes your your z your x axis will be just like tweaked slightly off. Uh, just go down here and zero that out. In this case, it's off on purpose. Um, I don't know, something like this. <laughs> uh, cool. Is there a way to paint in the texture map instead of the poly paint? Um, not really. You can paint in the poly paint and, and transfer it to a texture map, but not really paint on a texture. Uh, let's see here. Uh, hard search section. I have not. How do I reset my export settings in ZBrush? Uh, underneath preferences. Uh, where is that stuff? Import export. It's in here somewhere. Am I going blind? Here it is. So here's all your export settings. And, you know, you do have some export settings per subtool, but I don't think there's very many anymore. Yeah, no, you don't. That's, that is what it is. Yeah, so this is a very old orc. <laughs> uh, twisting the ends in the right direction. Any hints about better curve control? Oh, yeah, I got you. So, when in doubt, on my YouTube channel, controlling curves. Um, each and every modifier list of hard surface modeling, Z modeler brush. Um, no. Some of them are kind of redundant, though, um, and some of them are like just obvious so um, again even even in this intro to ZBrush stuff if you go down to the Z modeler section you know here's polygon actions edge actions point actions you can also um, where else is in here so Z modeler basics just a ton of Z modeler stuff Z modeler updates edge extrusions um, I think Pixelogic Classroom, Joseph Dress did a pretty comprehensive breakdown of every everything. But a lot of it is is probably just faster just to take a face selection, choose it, and then just see what it does. Um, might be easier than trying to track down a video of what does extrude mean? Just, just do it. And uh, you'll probably scoot along a little faster. Trying curves, you clip curve, trim, or knife as well. Um, I don't know how to help that. So, uh, yeah, control shift. There's, I mean, there's not a, it's not a ton of control. You know, you can use your space bar and then alt tap twice to do sharp and then alt tap once to do bendy. 
Um, trying to think if there's any and one of the things that if you're if you are new to zbrush where you're like i i need to do exactly this you know i want to put one a straight line here and then a straight line here um you know it may be harder to do than it maybe should be you know um but at the same time if you're just trying to quickly go through and make something crazy uh, and you don't need to like turn it into a modular set piece that has snapping verts so you can, you know, put it on Unreal and run around it. Then, yeah, maybe ZBrush, in that case, ZBrush may not be your first choice. You may want to set it up first in an external program with all that and then bring it into ZBrush. But uh, you can get pretty precise with ZBrush too. But again, depends on what you're going for. Hmm. Um. Let's see, yes, Daz, and uh, what's the other one? Um, there was another thing I used for, it was an auto rigging. I brought an animation, <laughs> it was this one. Um, this one here. So this was brought in from what? Oh, I forget the name of the program, Mixamo. Uh, so I brought in some mixing mo. I did an auto rig in Maya, and then brought in some. Um, you can so you can do that stuff in mixing mo too if you want. That was fun. Make sure. Uh, I was just trying OBJ. And I was trying to break it. So I prefer FBX because FBX is going to take all your subtool names, and I think it does the bounding box thing to make sure things don't scoot around. Um, cool. Uh, negative health effects from 3D printing. What is your setup for ventilation? Uh, no negative health effects from 3D printing. And for ventilation, I have a filter box fan that goes from one side of the room. And then I have another filter box fan that goes on the window and it just sucks through. And I'm not in the room when it's printing out. Um, so that's that. Now, I, eventually I would like to have a room dedicated to just 3D printing and have uh, an enclosure for the 3D prints that I can have a ventilation um, tube that goes outside. Uh, that's the ideal setup. Cool, dimension kill it to be uh, mechanical. Um, yeah, and I wish CAD modeling had sculpting tools. Uh, when that happens, uh, I guess we'll, we'll be in the future. Uh, but yeah, so that's another thing too, is if, you, if I needed to do something very, very precise or fit something, very precisely, and I want to work to that scale. Uh, I go over this. Did I go over this? Oh, you know what? I did. Um, I'll, I'll send you that. So, in my YouTube playlist, there's a lychee slicer uh, playlist that I did, and then the very first, oh, the very last one, uh, 3D print setup working at scale. Uh, I do basically the same thing. Um, like if I want to go through here and be like, okay, give me. I guess you guys can't see all that, huh? If I need to work precisely to something, uh, I can go in here and I say, give me a new sketch on this build plane. And I want to do a rectangle from uh, the center. And I need it to be 150 by 80. And I need it to be, you know, 150 millimeters up then I can literally just take this and work to this scale. So if I want to 3D print my vampire guy, let's go in here and I'm going to say um, save mesh as, don't need to worry about normal deviation because it's just a box, STL, and back in ZBrush. Let's go out of edit mode, hit control N, import, well, first of all, so I have this object here, and this is at ZBrush scale. So if I go down here to size, so geometry, size, and Z position, everything's all zeroed out. Size is set to two. So the XYZ size is about two is where ZBrush likes to be. In fact, if I go in here to subtool append, and I say cube, and I add a cube here, you're going to see, oh, look at that. It fits right. The bounding box of this object fits perfectly within that cube, and that's not by accident. So if I want to go back to this character and I'm like, hey, I want to work at ZBrush's native scale on this. So if I 
I mean, it kind of already is. If I went down here and I said append a cube, you're going to see he fits generally within that cube. Um, and in fact, if I go down here to geometry size, it's 0.26. Um, so if I want to, you know, let's we can just do this. So we have all these objects here. I'm going to go ahead and turn everything on, and I'm going to say Z plugin scale master. And I can set this to ZBrush Scale Unify. That'll go through. Okay. Okay. Sorry, he's got a bunch of subtools here. That'll go through and uh, set. And again, it was already pretty close, but it'll go ahead and unify your scene scale. Um, down. So, and again, it's a very minor adjustment in this case, but if I want to work to something specifically, you know, if I'm modeling in Max Miyamoto Blender and I want to import that in, I'll show you in just a second, it will modify, or, or like Marvelous Designer. If we go in here to imports uh, from our desktop here, the build volume. And I'm always a little bit nervous so I like to do a quick geometry modified topology mirror and weld across the x-axis. Um, you know, so this thing is huge. If we go down here to XYZ size, it's set to 150. Um, that's weird though, because when I import something, hold on just a second, and edit, 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 import, build volume, give this a second. There we go. That's what it should have done. <laughs> Mirror and weld. So now, if I go down here and I look at the uh, export setting, the scale is set to 75. Uh, but if I look at the size, it's set to 2. So it already went through and did a un ZBrush Unify scale. So everything works correctly within ZBrush. Um, there's nothing weird going on. But if I need to fit something to this, I'm going to go ahead and rename this. Um, Print volume. Let's go back to our character here, and I need to clean this file up, but we'll just take what we have here. Okay, so I'm going to put, uh, let's go in here to W. I'm going to control shift drag over a bunch of stuff. Hold on just a second. Let's say control F, yes move let's drop these in I'm gonna get our Z plugin subtool master copy folder let's go back to our 3d print volume and we'll go back here to Z plugin paste folder and I'll go ahead and paste all of those folder objects to my new scene And since ZBrush's native scale is set to millimeters anyways, and that build volume I brought in was millimeters, the transpose line units will already be set. So now we can go to move here and we can say transpose set, and we can literally just scale this down to fit within our millimeter build volume that we know is millimeters because we, we, we brought in that scale. So now this is good. So I'm gonna say W, turn off move multiple. Um, so to test this, we can go into, let's see, W and then Y, we go to transpose line. And let's go in here to preferences. Oh, it doesn't make a liar of me. Transpose units, unit scale one. So how many units did we say this was? It's a calibration distance should be that unit. 80, yeah. Now my 10 minor ticks per we probably just want, let's do zero and one major tick. Just trying to get it, to, there it goes, it shows up. So now that is 80 millimeters um, here. So if we went back in here, let's go ahead and turn off our build volume here. And we want to measure out how many millimeters things were. Um, for example, this is how many millimeters wide? It is, this is one millimeter right here. So now we're working to that unit scale kind of weird but if you do need <laughs> so z plugin i had that video that i think i linked but uh, z plugin scale master 
click this and then click this little YouTube video and Joseph Drust will walk you through the scale master specifics. Mm. Um, you can also go in here to clean tool utility if you want to download this and install it. This one will, like I should have done a show hidden all um, before I went through and did a unify. Cool. Um, <laughs> Handel, <laughs> uh, great musician. You talk about texturing a model uh, without insane UV steps. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Don't do UVs, just paint on them, I guess. Uh, Fusion 360 or Rhino in your preference? Uh, probably Fusion 360. I mean, it, it, when I say preference, I just mean what I've used. I've never used Rhino, so it's not like... I've extensively used these both, and I've decided through my dedication to, you know, finding out what was most preferable to my workflow, I choose this. It's like, no, I just used Fusion 360 10 years ago, and I still use it. And then, uh, like, Moi it's another good one. They're setting in tripart curve brush so the curve fall off by size will taper to a point if you flip the fall off profile. When I flip the fall off, the tapered point is blunted. Um, it should do about what you would expect. So if you want to very quickly make a tripart curve brush, uh, you know, let's just do a ring. Make poly mesh 3D, control shift, drag here, W, Y, control, oops, uh, mask, invert, control, drag up. So we can say U, are an end, you are an end, and you are repeating middle, and we are facing this way up is the direction it wants to go. So B, create insert mesh uh, new. Ah, it's so crazy today. I don't know why. And then I have a bunch of stuff open, so it wants to save it all. That could be why it's crashing. <laughs> uh, but um, the, now the one thing it's not going to do is um let me see yeah 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 uh you know what let's do you know do a cylinder this time edit um make poly mesh 3d control drag invert up and we'll just take this front end off say delete hidden and we'll say inset poly group ball legacy here let's we'll take this outside delete hidden q mesh my group all there we go and again top bottom it's tripart curve brush so we need three parts b create insert mesh new so now we have an insert mesh brush of course we don't want that we want a curve brush with a repeating middle uh, and it's going to weld so it's going to be kind of just like a ribbon dragged out so brush uh, curve. I just like to open all these all these curve stuffs uh, curve mode so now we can turn on curve mode and interesting, repeating middle. Oh, damn, I didn't get the polygroups right. So control W, control W, and then I had some hidden polygroups on the back, control W. Now we got three polygroups, B, create insert mesh, new, curve functions, curve mode. There we go. Uh, now it's not welded, so we gotta go down here to brush, modifiers, turn on weld points, so we can tap to update. And now these things will be nice and welded. We have bend start and bend end. And we can use our brush size here. So we can just drag out these things like so. And if I want to, I can also go in here to I like to turn down this max bend angle to zero. So it'll kind of behave a little more organically. It won't, it won't allow you to kind of really crease it up. It's like a, it won't allow you to break it. Now you can of course crank that up and you can do whatever you want. But anyway. Um, what was the question? Oh yeah. So we're going to go over here to, um, intensity I think is just for like sculpting, uh, not for IMM tripart curve brushes, but size should go from big to small little fl flagell flagellum, is that what it's called? Um, so we can go from big to small. And then if we go down here to the curve fall off, when we flip horizontally, it should go from small to big. So, um, it should do that. Now, if it's blunted, Oops, uh, this you could drag this up so that you're doing it on purpose. So it goes from big to, you know, not so big, but not to a point. Um, we 
Uh, another thing you could try if you if you did need um, so for example I have like a bend curve that I can pop in here and we can say split mass points ah yeah there's something there's something screwy with the uh, splitting stuff now hmm you can take a cylinder and then you can use bend curve here uh, so cylinder here edit make poly mesh 3d I'm gonna go ahead and you can hold down alt and you can scale along one axis here and um, you know what let's do this let's do geometry uh, edge loop delete loops and I'm just gonna manually add some in here so it's nice and even so insert multiple edge loops eh, keep the same poly group so here W go in here to uh, bend curve and then we can set our resolution so now you can go through here and you should have a ton of control to kind of go through and not only bend stuff out but also go through and taper uh, let's squeeze scale twist so we can scale you can scale down as you go and you can scale up as you go so you can use this to kind of fine-tune Where things go and you can kind of taper this way and you can also do a cool um, twist so you can kind of twist as you go down uh, and then once you know, remember you're also setting up paths as you do this so as you're twisting in here you can go through and I'm going to isolate just this green part here geometry modified topology delete hidden and then you can go through here and say you know poly group poly loop here and you know we'll do every other one and I'm just doing a polygroup and tapping alt just to kind of get new polygroups through each one of these and essentially what I'm doing is I'm setting up polygroup borders that's enough so we're gonna go over here to stroke uh, curve functions uh, polygroups and then do um, I like to use my curve brush I have a brush in here that I set up special for me um, IMM underscore IMM where it is oh no it's not under there it's under military for some reason uh, there we go simple tube so and here you could even you could good could you could go into size and go ahead and have it taper but boy it really does not want me to do anything this morning um, and it should follow through in fact I can I can show you uh, I'll give you a whole playlist for that so in here look for actually in here this will be a little bit easier on my eyeballs than YouTube's playlist here uh, the ZBrush Summit 2018 in here so here's the presentation let's copy this to y'all so here's the entire uh, a presentation I did and then oh perfect uh, right way back in here when we were just doing the demos just going through here and just you know doing like coiled you do hair stylized hair you can do coiled wires and stuff like that uh, you can check that out and I also have down here under the tutorial series there's 96 videos of a breakdown of every little thing in there it's a little dated it's 2018 so you know a couple versions back but you know for what it's worth all right, it's eight o'clock. Any last minute? Um, let's go ahead and kill this up. Uh, yes, and wash hands. Masks, glasses, uh, <laughs> gloves, nitrile gloves, wash your hands, all that stuff. Um, cool. Uh, cloth. Yeah, cloth is cloth is fun. Accessories is fun. Now I'm afraid to do it because I'm afraid if I put something on there and then split it, it's going to crash on me. Um, but like I said, uh, there's if you're ever if you ever oh here's here's what you really need um, on my YouTube channel here. If you go down to well, there's two places. Uh, this will have them all. So my my channel and there Pixel channel. Here's all the previous live streams. So if you're ever like you know this this Ninja Turtle guy. You know, so it'll be bop and rock steady, bebop, rock steady, bebop. 
Um, you know, the entire making of him, just all sorts of cloth and stuff going on and Mar even marvelous design and rebuilding stuff. So there's a ton of stuff in here you can check out and see if anything is worthwhile to you while you're getting, getting acclimated. Uh, Holy Grail 3D tools, if it could have anything, just, just AI, well, my Holy Grail would be the just make it button, but then you wouldn't really need me. I'm torn on that one. The Holy Grail that would take my job. <laughs> yeah, not Blender. Uh, and, until Blender becomes with the uh, the Make It button. Uh, the Holy Grail would just be the... Dial in, dial in your sliders. I guess it would be something like this. Where it would be... Uh, what was that? That was... That was GDC, so that was Halo. If you want to watch this GDC presentation, here's my Holy Grail. Way towards the back. There you go. There's my Holy Grail. It's coming. Not Maybe not in our lifetime, but... Uh, creates a brush like you do with a cube. Taper is a point with a default. Okay, so you have the uh, cube, and then you have the point, the fall-off horizontal, and the part is now blunt. Let me try that real quick. Everybody, crush fingers for me. Edit, make poly mesh 3D. So we have a cube here. Um, I'm assuming maybe stretch the cube out so the parts are a little more equal. So we got one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Oh, shoot. That's all right. We'll make do. Brush, create insert mesh. Oops, brush, create insert mesh. New. We already know the steps by now. Stroke, curve mode, um, uh, modifiers, weld points. Okay, so we've got this going. So now let's go and check back with our curve functions size here. And then we want to flip it fall off flip and then maybe well so this will go you know big to small oh you ooh, did you find something did you find something oh look at that mm -mm -mm. so this one goes to a point however this one does not hmm submit a ticket submit a ticket for that one you found the golden submitted ticket you're right it doesn't. I wonder, because we're just flipping. It's not that the geometry is the same. I don't know. That's a good one. Good catch. Um, hmm. Cool. You have a good one too. Um, oh, thanks, Uncle Jesse. Everybody, go to his channel. Click his name right now. <laughs> uh, Yes, uh, and it's the, the most nerve-wracking thing with the 3D printing videos is I'm recording. Uh, I don't know what I'm really doing. I know just enough to be dangerous. I've, I've had five successful prints in my life, and I've got a whole slicer video out and like two 3D printing videos out. So I try to make myself look competent in editing, which is nothing new, but um, usually I'm a little more competent or at least a little more confident. Um but I'm still learning, but I still need to get content out. So you guys are right there with me as I'm stumbling through, but I try to cut some of that out. Some of that stumbling out, I cut out in editing. Not all of it. There's some stuff in there for sure, but thank you, Uncle Jesse. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks everybody. I'm going to head out and uh, I'll, I'll be back on my channel on Thursday. And we'll, I don't know, I'll, I'll try to get stuff sorted out so we can make some cool some cool stuff. Maybe I'll go and dig through and we'll make a Rancor. We'll update my Rancor. Cool. Thanks, everybody, and catch you on the flip side.